time to move around. Are you searching for a place for regular worship? We're delighted to have you here. Please remember to turn your phones to the side of the and we get ready to worship the Lord. It's a pleasant morning to you. We're glad you can throw them to join us here at the But the wisdom that is formed 
from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruit, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. All together, and, and the rule of righteousness is all in peace. Again, and may be peace. Let us pray. Eternal God, once again, we just want to say thank you. Dear. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just invite your Holy Spirit just to take control of this worship service today. Let our hearts and let our minds be receptive to your word, dear Lord, on the day. Ask you, Lord, give the preacher preaching power on the day, dear Lord, continue, dear Lord, just to cover him with your hand and your continuous love. As you bless each and every household that is represented in the here today, bless those who was on their way and bless those who desire to go cannot make it, dear Lord. As you, Lord, we want to ask your ordinary worship service on today. We want to be moved by your Holy Spirit. As you let us, man, stay focused on you and you only on today, dear Lord. We love you, we adore you, and we just ask you to just continue to bless Bethany as a whole, dear Lord, and just continue to move our spirit, dear Lord. Let us have a hunger and thirst for your word each and every day. This I ask you in God and Son's name, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and let the church say amen. amen. amen.
Amen. Amen. Our response and reading is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Matthew, chapter 7. We will begin at verse 13. I'm sorry, 15. Excuse me. Matthew, chapter 7, beginning at verse 15. Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 15. We all there? Amen. <laughs> Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. <laughs> Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And then I will, will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock.
registered on the third Sunday, third Sunday in February. On that Sunday, all youth ushers are asked to wear all black. So please make a note, parents and youth ushers. Uh, we also want to note that the uh, first quarter business meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow evening at 7 will be postponed by one week. We are postponing it till February 6th based on the weather report of freezing rain tomorrow evening. So please make note uh, those that you know that may have attended that are here, please reach out to them. We don't want anyone driving here and the meeting not happening. So that meeting will be postponed one week until February 6th, still at 7 p.m. The last note is that our sister, uh, Sister Willie Bryant, has been hospitalized. We are asked to remember her in your prayers, please, uh, for Sister Willie Bryant. Bethany, here is your weekly and social announcements. Weekly and social announcements are now transitioning to day. Please submit your announcements by end of day on Wednesday to the media page. Thank you. 
Missionary Baptist Church. We welcome you and hope you'll come back again. Thank you. Thank you. Church, amen. 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 Say amen again. Amen. 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 We give praises to our God and to all of you who are here today. We are thankful to Him for the privilege of coming together to worship. We ask that you govern yourselves according to the announcements of the Lord. Visit and pray for those persons who are sick and shut in. Special prayers for Sister. Willie really Bryant, uh, everybody informed that she's in the hospital, so let's uh, pray for her as uh, she's going through right now. Amen. 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 All of uh, those persons who are bereaved are going to lift them up in prayer in a special way. And I'm just glad to see y'all here today. <laughs>
Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Our praise dancers did an outstanding job today. Come on, to get well. They were dancing so hard on the chest, they almost got out of the way. Coach and the job she's doing, and Sister Rhonda. Amen. Chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7. We've been laboring on a Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to look at chapter 7. Start reading at verse 23. I'm sorry, 24. 24. 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house. I pray they don't stop that radio from playing. All right. She needs me. She needs me. Give me the extra. I got to turn it off. Put it under some water. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Praise the Lord for the phone. Man. All right, let's try this again. Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew. And beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Look at somebody say, Upon a rock. Upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not should be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sands, upon these sands. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It came to pass when Jesus had ended up these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. For a few minutes, I'm going to talk on the subject contemporary Christian. How do we stack up compared to our forefathers? How do we stack up compared to those who live in the yesteryears? Got to see you today, sister. Operation on my eye. There too. You can see me now. Pray the glory. Harrison Emerson Foster preached a sermon and talked about a modern preacher, but he hypothetically had a situation whereby there were two young men. One was a Jewish worshiper, the other one was a Christian. Young Jewish young man said, uh, I'm really not into the orthodox Jewish mentality. I'm more contemporary. My perspective is more modern. There are a lot of those old beliefs they had I don't share. I have a more modern perspective. He said, But you know that there are times when I wonder. 
is something missing. There's something missing. There are times when I feel like I, I'm missing something. The young Christian says, well, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, old-fashioned like those old theologians. They had a lot of beliefs I didn't believe. My, mine, too, is a more modern perspective. I, I have a different posture. I kind of come at this at a different angle. But there are times but it appears the soul is a little thin. The soul is a little thin. I wanted to take off from that perspective. I, I usually kind of like the exegesis of the text and dissect it, but today I, I kind of wanted to just start from that perspective of what are you building on? How do you stack up to those old people? When you start deciding your beliefs, what is the criteria? Where are you coming from? I want to go that today because I want all of us to examine ourselves and, and, and especially in times like these, especially in these days when we got so much turmoil and unrest, what, what is the church doing? What is the church saying? What are you doing? Are we making a difference in our society? Let me start there by talking about making measurements, making measurements. How, see, if you talk about how you measure up, you have to have some measuring device, some ways of measuring my progress or my lack thereof. Those young men that Frosty was talking about, uh, they were more concerned with their contemporaries Opinion. But we live in a time when, when young people seemingly have a, a totally different perspective. <laughs> we have a generation gap. That's that's going to get mildly. We have a generation gap. We have a class gap. An educational gap, there are different perspectives, and, and people bring all of them here. Those come because a lot of people don't see the need to come to church. Right. 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 I mean, old people used to be in church on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, and Sunday night. And we say, it don't take all of that. Monday night for mission, Tuesday night for brotherhood, and Wednesday night for prayer meeting. You might get third y'all, except the ushers call on that meeting that day. Then Friday, the youth department had to come, choir, be one of the days on Saturday. It don't take all of that. But look at us, look at us. We, we decided it don't take all of that, and consequently, we don't even want to come on Sundays anymore. We don't have a one service a day, and we don't even want to come to that. Meeting, what's that? Yeah. That's something that hmm. is unnecessary. I can pray in my house. Hmm. I'm going to go pray. I'm going to pray. And, and so we, we find ourselves in a situation whereby we have modernized our religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we've also weakened our faith. Yeah, Amen. yeah. yeah. Can't talk to our children because our example contradicts our word. Say it, say it, say it. Right, right, right. Tell them to be faithful, might good work, but they see you. <laughs> <laughs> they see what your priorities are. They see what you put emphasis on. They see what you stress. Yeah. So when you measure, what kind of measure are you 
talking about. Am I, am I more concerned with being politically correct? Or am I more concerned with building on a rock? What are your goals? What are you trying to do? Is everybody happy? Yeah. That we live in a world where Clint, that, that everybody seems to be pleased except God. Uh, everybody's happy. It's all good. Preaching on preach too long today because I gotta watch the older I can't watch them this Sunday because they lost. <laughs> I wonder if they lost because you didn't have time to come to church. <laughs> that, 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 when you start talking about measurements, you need to ask yourself who are taking the measurements? Yeah. How do you measure up? How do you measure up with your contemporaries? And then how do you measure up with those who are older than you? Those of us who have some age on us, before you start celebrating, ask yourself how good an example are you? Say it. You can say all the time, I got a problem with you always telling me about your mentor who is dead, and yet no young person can point to you as a mentor. It seemed like to me if Sly was all that good, it seemed like he should have left some fruit somewhere. He should have somebody who's given an example of what a dedicated preacher ought to be, what a dedicated Christian ought to be. It seemed like if Sister Lark was all that strong in the Lord, it seemed like somebody who sat under her ought to be strong in the Lord. It seemed like if Brother Lark was such a strong deal, it seemed like somebody should have learned from him. It seemed like if all these old people made such an impact on the kingdom, why is it they didn't make an impact on you? How do you measure up? Hmm. So it comes to the point where when you start looking, we ask ourselves, where am I? Where do I stack up? Am I ready for the storm? That brings me to my next point. I ain't gonna be long. I'm gonna sit there. I see magnified misery. Magnified misery. You see, in the text, we've got two houses. He really doesn't tell us any distinction between the houses. The lumber seems the same. The contractor seems the same. I mean, I mean, the construction of the house, the building itself seems like there's no difference in the house. The only distinction that Jesus makes in his parable is the foundation. That's all. The foundation. It matters not whether you got gold on your walls. It matters not whether you uh, uh, covered the surfaces with silver. It matters not uh, whether you got uh, uh, Michelangelo's paintings hanging in your house. That really doesn't speak to this parable. He says you can take the same two houses. The same two contests, the furniture can be the same furniture. The distinction is the foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and really, he says, things only happen when the storms come. Y'all heard me say before. See, see that's, that's the problem. We, we've got too many people today who are living before the storm came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many people who were evaluating their lives and the storm hadn't come yet. Right. Too many people celebrating and you really don't have a whole lot to be celebrating. Check out a problem with you celebrating your PhD when you don't even recognize the sacrifice people made to allow you to be able to go to college. Yeah. 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 You got the audacity to say you're not black when so many black people sacrifice to help you get to where you are. You act like you did, you've done so much 
when they got people who were scrubbing floors and cleaning toilets to get you the privilege you have right now. And you got the nerve enough to look down your nose at somebody. Because they're not on your level. What storms have you been through? Before the storms came, both houses look good. Before the storms came, there's no problem. Before the storm came, both dwellings were standing. And you see, the thing about storms is that storms don't always come <laughs> at the beginning of life. Storms don't always come in the middle of life. It doesn't always come to nobody. See, I don't ever know when a storm is going to come. And because you've been through your storm, it has nothing to do with my storm. Because you may have yours in your youth, and I may have mine in my senior years. So before I start judging you as a young person, I better wait till I go through my, yeah, yeah. my storm. Before I start pointing a finger at somebody, before I start trying to make, he said, he said, judge not that you don't be judged yourself, that you need to be careful how you're looking at other folks before you start trying to get a little speck out of somebody else's eye. You ought to notice that big log in your eye before you try to criticize somebody else. You ought to ask yourself, what are they going through? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The time when, when people want to celebrate doing nothing, it's like it's like they celebrate graduating kindergarten. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I don't have no problem trying to make little kids feel good, but the fact of the matter is, like my little grandbaby told her daddy, when, when my grandson graduated from high school, she told her, her daddy, I don't have to worry about that, I already graduated. <laughs> because she graduated from kindergarten. <laughs> She felt like she was on the same level with him. A graduation is a graduation. She can't see the distinction. And you see, that's where we are spiritually. We're trying to equate the wrong kind of graduation. That because it has the same level, don't mean it has the same quality. Amen. I came out of college. In fact, I first began in college. I had a summer job. My summer job, Brother Jackson, I made more money than my dad had ever made in his life per hour. Yes, my freshman year. Yeah, yeah. My sophomore year, I got another summer job making the coming. When I started working in the secular world, I was making more money than my daddy could dream of making. Mm -hmm. But 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 Bubba, I never had the audacity. Man. To think that I was better than him. Because if it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't have gone to college in the first place. I made up my mind I was going to join the Air Force and give me one of those bills and have Uncle Sam pay for my education. And my dad is the one who talked to me and said, I never thought about you going anywhere else but to college when you finish. I never found up in my thinking about you doing anything else. God bless me to get a degree in industrial engineering, making good money. More than he ever made. But how could I brag on what I was making? But I recognize it had it not been for him. Y'all hear me? I can't celebrate where I am if I don't celebrate who helped me to get it there. I can't celebrate what I am if I don't celebrate who contributed to what I am. I can't make an accurate evaluation if I don't have a good look at what's going on around me. Yeah, yeah. The sunshine. See, in the sunshine, wise people and fool people look the same. <laughs> the sun 
sunshine, you can't tell a smart man from a dumb man. That's that's the problem. That's why you elect a man like Donald Trump and, and, and make him a president because the sun is shining. You don't see what's wrong. Right. Derek. Oh, Dirk, Dirk, good. Basketball player. Dirk is a German. But I never considered Dirk being a racist. Even though he's a German. The reason, love, ain't not because I love him, I never met him. But I was looking at the advertisement and Dirk always had him a black girl. <laughs> he married a black woman. See, you can't be racist and marry. Your actions says it all. But he's German. Why not when we celebrate the Holocaust? Let's jump on dirt, because he's German. You know what? They were talking about the Holocaust this past weekend. They were celebrating and talking about, we're doing this so you can remember what happened to us. We're doing this so you can remember what happened to our forefathers. And understand me, brothers, and I have no problem with me remembering what Jews had to go through, what Israelis had to go through. My problem is, why is it when I try to teach my history, you don't speak up for my history? Why is it you can see why we need to know your past, but you're not helping folks see my past? How is it when I look at your atrocities, it's not bad for my children, but it's so bad when your children see what y'all did to my folk and Yeah, 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 yeah. Before the storm comes. That's the problem. We want to look at life, evaluate life before the storm comes. But like my granddaddy used to say in that song, that old hymn, that old me would say on Sunday night, that awful day will surely come. I don't care who you are, I don't care how old you are, I don't care how bright you are, I don't care what you've gone through. If you keep on living, the storm will come. The winds will blow, the, the rains will fall. Into each life, some rain must fall. So now you come to Tyreek Nichols. Brother. Dead. Again. George Floyd. The list goes on. Brothers keep dying. Now keep me in the same crap. Heard a priest this morning, they want to defund the police. Well, you see, they talk about taking away some of the money you're spending on guns and start using some classes to teach them how to deal with the mentally challenged. But you don't want to talk about that. You want to talk about like somebody doing you some great wrong. We always want to fix everything, but we don't want to fix anything. The only sin we see is abortion. So if I kill a baby in the womb, I'm a sinner. If I kill a baby under the bridge, that's not a problem. You can shoot brothers back down in the back, that's okay. But you better not have an abortion. You can deprive poor people of their means of living, that's all right. But don't kill a baby in the womb. You can fix policies that mess up people's lives. That's all right. But don't you dare have an abortion, you're going to hell. And my problem is if, if abortion sends you to hell, why don't you go to hell for some of this other stuff you do? 
If the church can't be the church when the church is supposed to be the church, what does the church have to do with this situation? And we can say all we want, but you can't you put your, your hole in the ground and pretend you don't have anything to do with it. We are right in the middle of it. The condition we are in, we have to. We've got to speak to it. God wants to know, what are you going to do about what you're going through? What kind of house have you built? What foundation are you building on? You got a choice, either rock or sink. What is the rock? Preacher, how about I got a rock? How can I distinguish between the rock and the sand? I, I tell you who the rock is. This rock is Jesus. He's the one. This rock is Jesus. He, he's the only one. Oh, well, gee, that's gonna that's gonna upset my Muslim friends. Yeah, yeah. Huh. This rock is Jesus. That's gonna upset my Jewish brothers. The rock is still Jesus. That, that I can't I can't, can't make a distinct and I can't uh, uh, try to make it through the storm without the solid rock. Yeah, yeah. I didn't need the rock when I wasn't in the storm. I didn't need the rock in the sunshine. I needed the rock when I got in the storm. And when I got in the storm, I needed some help. Let me close. I'm talking about the magnificent master. Y'all go on and do what y'all want to do. <laughs> how do I solve this problem, brother? Well, James, how do I get through this? How, how do I not let God down? What does God have to say about it now? It goes back to what we talked about earlier. He said last week, my word is spirit. I said spirit is, is God. That, that his word leads me to God. That, that I talk about miracles. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you get to a point, I told you last week, that you can't do what you need to do, that's time to look to God. Are you hopeless? No. Do you have a word? Yes. Is there any hope for today? Yes. What is that hope? That hope is the rock. The same God who gives me hope in a hopeless situation is the same God to speak to my situation right now. That we are living in times when so much atrocity is going on, murder, uh, uh, biasness, uh, strife, racism, uh, malice. I mean, just people just killing each other. You, you, you have white people, white policemen killing black people, and now you got black policemen killing black people. But then they can, they, can, they can show you the tape right away when there's some brothers guilty, but they have to wait before they can show you the white boy. And I think I'll tell you, before you start walk, uh, uh, fussing with white folk, you ought to ask yourself, why is it brothers are killing each other? What's so retarded about black people want to kill black people and act like you're doing the law and say it? Black people kill more black people than the Ku Klux Klan. Black people kill more black people than any white man. Black people kill more black people than any policeman. Before you start fussing about everything else, you got to look in the mirror and say, it's me. It's me. We can solve a lot of our murdering problem if we just start behaving ourselves. Stop letting the devil use you to mess up your life. But well, brother preacher, you could get more of them in church if the church wasn't all messed up. I wish I had a witness. Never told me the church wasn't messed up, but I, I declare unto you, the messed up church is still better than the messed up world. At least in our messed up church, we admit we got a problem. At least in a messed up church, we admit we aren't perfect. At least in a messed up church, we admit we need some help. At least in a messed up church, we admit that we need some hope. At least in a messed up church, we've got something we can do. Seems like to me, I need to solve the problem, but I need to solve it God's way. Oh, yeah, all that hard. No, it's not easy, but I can understand. I can tell you, if I can't do it, I've got to trust God to do it. Well, hey, that sounds good, but how do I get God involved? And God said, well, before you start talking to me about the problem, you got to ask yourself, are you doing what you're supposed to do as it relates to your relationship with me? You claim to be a 
disciple of Christ when right here in chapter 7 he says you get to a point where you don't know what to do I've got an end, I got an endless amount of resources and all you got to do is avail yourself of those resources how do I avail myself of those resources he said ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find not and the door will be opened unto you you have not because you have
can do a better job. Yes, God has the power, but we need to get out of the way and allow God to have his way. Be some teamwork. And everybody needs to do their part.
used to say I'm free. In times like these, you need a savior. Yeah. In times like these, you need a name.
Rule and abide with each and every one of them. 